Okay, thank you, greetings, and good afternoon to all. Thank you for accepting another invitation to our webinars of this semester. Today, we are very pleased to have colleagues from La Guardia Community College with the topic, Building Bridges, Enhancing Education to Employment Pathways Through Mutually Beneficial Relationships with Local Businesses, Faculty, and Career Services. Today, we have with us Asanta, Howard and Sandra Mejia, who are here with us. Thank you so much for uh, accepting our invitation to discuss this important topic. Uh, today we have close to 100 participants. We already have 39 connected. We hope that the rest can join, in, join in us very soon. Those participants register are from different institutions, uh, more than Oh, more than 20 member institutions in Puerto Rico and the US. And we also have some other participants from the Department of Education in Puerto Rico and private schools and organizations as well. Greeting to all, we, we hope that this webinar will be of great benefit to everyone. And our apologies for the inconvenience with the technical issues. Before we start the webinar, we would like to share a few things as always. For your convenience, closed captions are available in English for this webinar. To activate this feature, you just go and see at the bottom of your screen the CC Lights uh, Show Captions uh, button. You just click here, select English, and then you will have the transcript right away. Also, in the next slide, uh, please, Diane, uh, we always ask you to use the chat to share your questions and or your comments. And also keep your microphones on mute to avoid interruptions. Always we have the link in the chat to request your certificate. Remember that is important. Uh, and in the next slides, you can also use your phone with the camera and uh, with the QR code. You can also fill out the form in the meantime to enjoy the webinar. Remember that it's important that you write your name correctly and also you write uh, your email is uh, more important than anything that the email is correct. So we, when we send the certificates, you are able to receive it. At the end of this webinar, you will receive an email with the link to complete a short electronic uh, evaluation to help us uh, see how your, uh, or to share your feedback of this webinar and help us also identify which head services and initiatives can support not only you, but your students and your feedback on how is the most, most effective way to promote these services. This uh, evaluation is anonymous and the estimate time to complete it is just between five to seven minutes. So we will really appreciate your time to complete this survey seeing this, your feedback is very important for us. Finally, we want and we invite you to spread the word and invite others to our next events. Just uh, need to register at the HEADS um, homepage, the main menu, next and past events. There you will find all the different uh, events that we will start, we still have during this semester. And we, during the summer, we will start uh, promoting the, the events for the next semester. Uh, next events include uh, of course, the, we already opened uh, the uh, applications uh, process for the, uh, excuse me, for the uh, academy, but the next event is tomorrow. So sorry, it's tomorrow. And this is the Student Leadership Showcase Tour is between 2 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. with Dr. Yesenia Minier from Western uh, Connecticut State University. And she will have an expert discussion about how to navigate when Title IX and cancel culture clash on your college campus. She's an expert on this topic. And we will love you to join in us tomorrow and invite your students to get benefit from this discussion. In the next slide, you will see now that we already opened the uh, application process for the HEADS Academy. Uh, the applications runs uh, or will be open until May 25. 
And this academy, uh, as you may know, is a program that we, a, a professional development program that we try to develop the next generation of leaders in learning technology at Hispanic serving institutions. That's gonna be four days from June 6 to June 9, four days of synchronous uh, sessions with experts from our member institutions in different topics to help you uh, have or, or help you uh, uh, learn different skills to help you be the next generation of leaders in, learn in learning technology. So don't miss this opportunity. And if you have any doubt, please contact us as well. The next slides, please we would like to announce that we have to change the date of the webinar in English with Dr. Juan Tito Melendez because he has his request of to move uh, or postpone the a webinar for a personal situation. So the next, uh, the new date is June 15 at, the, at from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern time. So we hope that you can update your agenda if you already did register for this uh, event. If not, please uh, register and be aware that the date is gonna be June 15. And finally, we would like to announce that we will have to close this sem semester, a special event during uh, the Headsborne meeting. We will be meeting this time at Long Beach uh, Chancellor's Office of the California State uh, University System. And taking advantage that we will be there, we will be uh, showcasing this uh, digital equity initiative at California State University San Bernardino with Dr. Michaela Pospescu and Dr. Samuel Sudakar from California State University San Bernardino. Be aware and since uh, head staff will be in California. The date for the Pacific time is, uh, or the time for the Pacific time is from 9.30 to 10.45, but the ones who connect from Puerto Rico or from the Eastern coast, for you, the time will be 12.30. So please join in us and help us close this a, a year, uh, intensive year, academic year 2022-2023 with this special event. Finally, uh, we invite you to help us sharing this access to the Peterson test prep where uh, you can find scholarships, practice tests, and ebooks to get prepared for tests such as the PCAT, ELSA, GRE. This is totally free of charge. And, uh, and to access this database, you will see that is, uh, you only need to follow very simple steps. Just go to heads. In the next slide, Diane, uh, the, in the next slide, you will see that you go to the Student Placita and then uh, in the Student Placita, click on the Peterson test spread uh, uh, link and then you go and, and click on the name of your institution and put the pass password. If you don't know the password, password of your institution, please send us an email to info ahead.org or a text to my mobile 787-616-3201. Please put your name and your institution name so I can uh, give you the correct password. And also, uh, we, we always showcase these uh, uh, databases in the next slide. We also have the Peterson Career Prep where uh, students can search for jobs, internships, create your resume and find career uh, among other services. And in the next slides, again, if you don't have the password, uh, it's the same process. Uh, you can send us an email or text me. And please help us uh, promote this among your students because you uh, are the ones who have direct contact with them. And if they don't know that these services are available, Definitely, although they are free of charge, they, they don't know how to access it. So I will uh, kindly request in your support to help us promoting it, these services. Uh, and finally, follow us in the social media accounts that we are very active. You can choose between Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. And remember that we have everything that we record like this webinar, uh, in our channel, all the repository of the webinars are there. And also in the homepage of the HEADS website in next and past events, you can find the repository of the past events like this one. Now we are ready to start our webinar and I am pleased to present our guest speakers today. 
let's start with Asanta Howard. She is the Interim Assistant Dean of Business Services and Workforce Development, uh, Development and Executive Director of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. She is an influential adult educator and visionary leader with over, over 20 years in, of achievement in leveraging adult education, small business services, and workforces development. And she holds a master uh, in a, a, a master degree in adult uh, education and human resources develop, uh, development from Forehand University. Thank you so much, Asanta, for uh, accepting our invitation today. And as well, I would like to introduce Sandra Mejia, is the internship manager of, for the Goldman Sachs 20. Uh, 10,000, excuse me, most businesses fellows program at La Guardia Community College. She has over six years of experience in developing and facilitating learning and professional development opportunities for students, employees, and leaders. Sandra received her Master of Arts in Industrial Organizational Psychology from Hofstra University as an Industrial Organizational Psychology Practitioner she utilized her experience in employee learning and development to provide students with effective individual group coaching, professional development consultations, and additional career readiness support throughout their time in the program. Thank you so much again. And now I'm gonna mute my, my audio and stop my video. Please uh, keep everyone uh, their microphones uh, a mute and the audios is so so we can avoid any interruptions and go ahead both of you i will make sure that everybody all the questions at the end can be read so you can reply go ahead good afternoon good afternoon thank you for inviting us to present on building bridges enhancing education to employment pathways through mutually beneficial relationships with local businesses, faculty, and career services. You gave us such a great introduction. We're gonna go right into our presentation. Um, we're gonna discuss the importance of building mutually beneficial relationships between education and employment stakeholders and how these relationships can enhance the education to employment uh, experience. We will focus on the strategies for engaging with local businesses, faculty and career services, and the benefits of building these partnerships for all stakeholders involved. Join us as we explore how we can bridge the gap between education and employment through collaborative efforts. In today's presentation, we will cover the following agenda understanding the importance of building mutually beneficial relationships. We'll look at a case study developing internships and experiential learning programs, maximizing the benefits of mutually beneficial relationships for students and colleges, and then strategies and benefits of mutually beneficial relationships for local businesses, faculty, and career services. That's a mouthful, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll dive into each topics and details and provide valuable insights on how these beneficial relationships can bridge the gap between education and employment path pathways. And what's so most in, in, important is our students are coming to college, you know, not just for an education, they're hoping to gain gainful employment. So we hope that this presentation will provide you uh, some insights and some tips of how you can implement that into your own programs. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> all right so up first um what we want to highlight throughout this presentation um, and discussing these mutually beneficial relationships among students faculty career services colleges funders and local small businesses um, and so as we highlight and explain the relationships and strategies to build them this is like a precursor and a little warning label for the presentation. Some of this may be a little repetitive, and so you may see some repetition, but that is intentional, and it's because we're highlighting these relationships, and many of them do have similar benefits and similar strategies to build them um, for the various stakeholders. So 
First and foremost, we want to make sure that we understand the concepts that we're going to speak about in the context of this presentation. So before jumping into the mutually beneficial relationships part, I want to highlight the focus of these relationships for the purpose of this presentation. All the relationships we are speaking about um, are being formed to build bridges between education and employment, which is crucial for both the success of the individuals participating as well as the organizations um, and companies involved. And so some of the reasons why it's important are, um, first and foremost, the the labor market is constantly changing and the skills required for jobs are evolving at a rapid pace. I'm sure many of you now hearing about AI and chat GPT have already made start started already thinking about how the job market is evolving and how quickly it's happening. So according to the National Association of Colleges and Employers, which we'll refer to as NACE, um, employers are now seeking candidates not only with the technical skills, but also critical thinking, communication, and problem solving skills. So we want to make sure that our students are graduating and completing their programs with the, that experience. Um, employers are always looking for the best candidates to fill their job vacancies. So by building bridges, uh, colleges can provide a talent pipeline of skilled graduates who can meet the needs of local businesses within their communities. Um, according to ONET, over 90% of employers consider internships and work experience as significant factors when deciding um, which candidates to hire. So again, we want to make sure that our students are graduating with these experiences to make them more employed. Um, student success. Building bridges um, can lead to better outcomes for our students. And so that's basically what I've been trying to, to say at the start of this slide. Students who participate in internships and other experiential learning opportunities are more likely to secure employment after their graduation. And additionally, students who have access to mentorship and networking opportunities are more likely to succeed in their careers. So we're building these relationships for them, even if, they're, even if it's not an internship and it's a different type of program, just the access to a mentor and the access to that type of network can benefit our students. Organizational success. Um, it's been found that organizations that have strong relationships with colleges can also benefit greatly themselves. So the Society of Human Resource Management, also known as SHRM, um, has found that companies that have strong internship programs high, high, have a higher rate of retention among entry-level employees, which is really important. Most of our students, as they're graduating, they're getting these really great entry-level positions, um, but how do they make sure that they keep those positions and how do employers make sure that they're keeping that top talent within their organization and finding pathways for them to move up it within the company. And that's by making sure that we're equipping the students um, for the real world workplace. And lastly, economic development. So if you wanted to make an argument to find funders within your local community, um, whether it's fundraising organizations or local government, um, building bridges in this sense can also have a positive impact on the local economy. According to the Harvard Business Review, partnerships between colleges and local businesses can lead to the creation of not just new businesses and new jobs, but even brand new industries. Um, and so we'll have some examples of how we've seen that happen as well. And this can lead to a boost of the local economy and, of course, provide new opportunities for individuals within the community. So it's a full circle ecosystem. System. And what we're here to discuss specifically is what the mutually beneficial relationship aspects are and how we can create them. Um, so I want to just clearly define that so that we're all on the same page as we move through this presentation. What mutually beneficial relationships are is that it's a partnership where both parties or all parties involved benefit from that relationship. And in the context of education to employment pathways, mutually beneficial relationships can be established between the college, local businesses, faculty, and career services to provide students with opportunities for hands-on learning, internships, and also job placement. Uh, so to create a mutually beneficial relationship, it's important to establish clear goals and expectations, and this can include defining the roles and responsibilities of each partner, setting measurable objectives, and ensuring open communication throughout the partnership's existence. 
Uh, so by building mutually beneficial relationships, we can provide numerous benefits for both education institutions and local businesses. And that's what we're going to be sharing with you throughout this entire presentation. Um, and we wanna provide you also with examples of what those benefits can look like so that if you need a cheat sheet or um, some information to use for a pitch um, for some type of experiential learning or program for students, uh, you can draw from the examples that we have. So one example of a successful program that utilizes these mutually beneficial relationships is the program that Asanta and I have worked very closely on, which is the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Fellows Internship Program. And this program specifically was piloted for two years, and it provided underrepresented community college students with paid internships at local small businesses. Um, so to give you a little bit of background, um, in order to gain a better understanding of the challenges that small businesses were facing, Goldman Sachs delivered a survey um, to their network of small businesses throughout the country. And what they found was that 97% of small businesses were having the same issue, which was difficulty hiring talent, attracting talent for their open positions, and also developing job-specific training and support to new talent in their organization. So this survey specifically served as a needs assessment and highlighted the need for an internship program that would connect students with the local small businesses. Um, and so by establishing this partnership between Goldman Sachs, community colleges, and 10,000 Small Businesses Fellows Program, we were able to create a mutually beneficial relationship. So on the screen, you can see some of the perks that both the student and small business owners um, receive through the program. Um, and then also we're addressing these challenges face on. And what we found was incredible success and growth for both the students and the small businesses. So I'm going to read off some stats um, that we're really excited to share at this point. We have 87% of our student participants stating that the internship was meaningful work. 79% um, of them stating that it's now encouraged them and given them that interest of starting a small business on their own. So that's just the thought. We may not see the impact at this moment, but moving forward, we may see new businesses and new industries popping up in our city because of this program. 93% uh, of business owners rec would say that they would recommend it to other small business owners. 81% of them stated that the program created value to their business, and it's estimated that the value um, to the business is double the amount that was paid to the students during the three-month internship. Um, so we're seeing that it's beneficial, it's valuable, and we're seeing outcomes. 40% of the small business owners um, express interest in hiring their students, and many Many of them were able to find the funds to do so. And 40% is an excellent number, but our main focus is the 100% of students um, that gained that hands-on experience, now have that skills, uh, have something that they can articulate during interviews and, and networking opportunities. So we're making them more employable in today's market, regardless of whether they were hired at their internship site or not. But of course, we're celebrating that 40% that were. Uh, so on your screen, there's a lot. I'm going to try to just um, quickly do a summary of what's on the screen. And what you're seeing is the contributions of each stakeholder and the benefit. So the few stakeholders we're highlighting is obviously the local businesses, faculty, career services, students, and the funder, Goldman Sachs, um, for this program specifically. Uh, again, just so you are able to draw examples of what we mean by the benefits on both sides. So local businesses, they provided meaningful internship opportunities, and in return, they gained access to a talented pool of community college students and um, potentially form additional partnerships within the, the college. Uh, faculty members assisted us in recruiting and referring students, and then in return, they're able to receive feedback from the industry experts, which are the employers, and faculty are able to then bring that knowledge back into their classrooms.
Career Services, um, which I'm a part of, assisted in developing the professional development curriculum and provide ongoing support to students. And in return, they're building relationships with local businesses and employer partners, um, which I know Career Services is always looking to expand. And students, uh, as I mentioned, gain that hands-on experience and exposure to entrepreneurship and professional skill building opportunities, while also um, contributing to a small business in need of their support and their talent. Goldman Sachs, they invested in the small businesses and in us, the community college. They brought all the partners together by leveraging their resources and expertise. And um, they're able to build that strong relationships with the local communities and create a positive social impact, which for them leads to greater brand awareness and a greater reputation. Uh, so overall, involving each stakeholder in the development and delivery of the new experiential learning program has those um, mutually beneficial aspects to it, but also allows us to provide the highest quality of beneficial learning experience to our students. And I'll hand it back over to Asanta. Thank you, Sandra. And so we're going to talk about the strategies and benefits of building the mutually uh, beneficial relationships with local businesses, faculty, and career services. Engaging with local businesses can definitely be a win-win situation for both the college, employers, um, and also students. According to NACE, National Association of Colleges and Employers, 91% of employers agree that college graduates should have the skills and knowledge they need to succeed in their organization. But in addition to the knowledge, it's the soft skills that they also learn through internships. Um, however, only 40% of the employers believe their new college graduates have the necessary skills and competencies. We have about four, we highlight four key strategies that we've used that you, your colleges can also use to engage with local businesses and develop. And some of you might be doing these already. Uh, one is networking events. Hosting networking events can bring together college students, faculty, and local businesses. At these events, it's a great way for them to kind of get to know each other and get involved at your university. According to NACE, career fairs and other networking events can result in up to 35% of job offers. And what we found with this pilot program with the Goldman Sachs is that quite a few of our businesses wanted to actually hire our students on their own without that additional funding from Goldman. Second, experiential learning. Many businesses are willing to host college students for this experiential learning opportunity, such as internships, job shadowing, and co-op programs. By creating these opportunities for students to learn and work with local businesses, colleges can help students develop, de develop critical job skills and build relationships with potential employers. And uh, three is our industry advisory board. Many colleges have industry, industry advisory boards made up of local businesses, leader, business leaders who advise on curriculum development, mentorship, and provide guidance on what skills are in demand in the workforce. And it's very important for colleges to, to have that relation, relationship and collaboration with small businesses, not just about the academics, it's about what our students are coming to school for, mostly they're looking to, to get into a career. So it's important that we are able to match that with the businesses. And that's what made this program very successful. And lastly, partnership programs. Colleges can develop partnership programs with local businesses that create mutually beneficial relationship. And we're gonna, you're gonna keep hearing mutually beneficial throughout this um, presentation. For example, colleges can partner with local businesses to create co-branded training programs, or for scholarships or sponsorships to students, or even collaborate on research projects. And I'll give you in, in ex a, a little example. Many, some students don't, you know, many of our businesses wanted marketing. They wanted social media marketing. You know, as you know, as a small business, you have to promote, promote. Our students, they don't, you know, necessarily have the experience of being a social media mar or social media marketing manager, Right. So what we did was we collaborated with our adult and continuing education program to offer a digital uh, marketing class. Right. And so with that partnership, 
we were able to have students learn a new skill and be able to, to implement that on the job. So that's a, a little example um, that we used uh, here. Uh, we want to build strong relationships with the local businesses so that it's beneficial uh, to all. Benefits to the local business businesses, access to a pool of qualified and motivated candidates. We mentioned that this is a pilot program, the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Fellowship Program, but it was in relation to the 10,000 Small Businesses Program, right? So it's um, a pool of students right here. It, it makes sense. If we're doing the traditional program on a campus, why not be able to offer that experience and that opportunity for our students? So it's opportunities for recruitment and brand building, access to fresh perspectives and new ideas. Many of our businesses said, oh my goodness, you know, having these, you know, having these students in our business really helped us to take a step back of what we needed to do. Enhanced workforce development, cost-effective training and development and access to finding um, resources. It's the next slide. <laughs> Strategy for engaging with faculty. You want to highlight the benefits to the faculty. Uh, provide training support and information. Involve, it's very important to involve faculty in the program development, which we did. We worked with the business and technology department here at LaGuardia Community College first. Recognize and reward faculty uh, participation. Next. And what's the benefit, you know, to our faculty? It's an enhanced curriculum, professional development opportunities, research opportunities, industry connections. It supports the students' uh, learning experience building a strong reputation you know, for the college. One of the things I like to say to our president is, look, if we are able to provide uh, good internship opportunities, experiential learning opportunities for our students, the word will travel. People will want to come to our college because they know that not only are they getting a really good education, but they're also getting an opportunity to intern or work with um, a business. Next. Strategies for partnering with career services. It's first identify key areas for professional development, integrate those professional development into programs, leverage existing resources, and provide ongoing support. I'm looking at the chat too, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and the benefits to career services is increased student engagement improved employer relationships, enhanced career services, off, uh, career services offerings, increased student employ employability, access to industry trends, expanded professional networks. All right. Um, so in this next section, what we'll be doing is highlighting the benefits of the uh, specifically for the students and the colleges. So Santa went um, over some very specific aspects of the college, like faculty um, and career services. And of course, um, apart from the college, the small businesses. Um, but here we'll be focusing specifically on our students and the college as a whole. Um, so According to the SHRM, uh, Society of Human Resource Management, 84% of employers believe that internships are an essential way to recruit new talent. And so I've used various different resources that all say the same thing. Internships, experiential learning is extremely important for employers to have um, before even considering a recently graduated student. Um, it really increases the student's employability and marketability. So um, some of the benefits to the students to just highlight a few are access to experiential learning opportunities such as the internships, exposure to industry trends and real world experiences. And these can enhance the academic learning because they're applying what they're learning in the classroom to the workplace and then applying what they're learning to the workplace to their schoolwork and keeping themselves engaged and motivated in that way. Um, it's an opportunity for them to build their professional network and connect with potential employers, access to enhanced career service offerings such as now they're more prompted to get their resume reviewed 
interviewed, they're prompted to get that interview preparation and attend job fairs, especially if those are already included into this experiential program that's been developed. Um, for the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program, uh, Fellows Program, we included a mock interview event before they even interview, um, before they're even selected for the program uh, to make sure that they are best prepared for when communicating with those small businesses. So even if a student wasn't selected or matched with a small business, they leave um, with that career services offering of the mock interview. Um, and it also increases, as I've mentioned many times already, the employability of the student and their job prospects upon graduation. So now they have some experience that they can leverage during their interviews. Um, and it also increases their potential for job offers and increased starting salaries. And so by working together, all of us as stakeholders um, can help students succeed in their career aspirations and achieve their professional goals while also benefiting. Now, how can we maximize strategically the benefits to the students? The first thing is we want to make sure that we're encouraging collaboration and communication between faculty, career services, and local small businesses. And this can easily be done just by starting the conversation, keeping everyone up to date, creating timelines, creating regular meetings. Um, and then you want to make sure that you're setting clear goals and assessments for experiential learning to ensure that students meet both their academic and professional standards while gaining relevant skills. So this may look like surveying them regularly throughout the program. We have a um, pre-start survey, midpoint survey, and then closing survey for this program. Specifically, um, you can host regular check-ins so that you're identifying any areas that students may need additional support in to make sure that they successfully complete that experiential learning opportunity. Um, and then you can also create standardized processes that any stakeholder that has to um, come in contact with the student um, in any aspect, such as whether you're a program administrator, whether you are an advisor, or if you are the supervisor at the local business, um, creating a standardized process that allows each of those um, people to assess the student but also most importantly, provide feedback. Um, so that's what we've noticed to also be a really great uh, learning opportunity for our students is getting that feedback from an industry expert or from an advisor while they're going through this almost practice of what a workplace can be like. And lastly, you wanna encourage students to reflect on their experiential learning um, so that they're able to apply that knowledge to the classroom, to the real, real world, and, and really foster and hone in on that professional growth. Um, so for example, with the internship program we've been using as the case study, we have a um, reflection session workshop. So it's an in-person event where we have all the interns um, participate in mindful and intentional reflection individually, and then opportunities for them to share with one another. Um, we know our students are extremely busy. Many of them have families, they have other jobs, and they have schoolwork, and they have this internship on top of that. So life goes by quick. It's, it's sometimes hard to carve out that time to really reflect on what am I doing? what is the purpose, what are my goals. So we want to make sure that we're giving students the opportunity to do that. Um, overall benefits for the college. And so when you're thinking about career services, faculty, local businesses, um, this section right here is going to be your mini resource if you're pitching to college leadership, what benefits can be um, had when getting these different stakeholders involved. Um, so first and foremost, increased employer engagement, which can lead to more internship and job opportunities for students. Through this fellows program, we've had so many business is now reaching out to us and expressing mm -hmm. that interest. And we want a student too. How do we get a student um, more interest in hiring our students as well after they've seen all mm -hmm. the incredible work and projects that our students can complete? Um, so that's what we want to see. Uh, improved job placement rates, so higher rates of student employment and better career outcomes, which can lead to higher retention rates already, increased alumni engagement, and a more positive reputation within the community. It can increase funding opportunities for the college, such as grants, scholarships, and donations, um, so that they can then help the colleges invest in resources and programs that benefit the students, faculty, and the overall mission. 
So now we have this playbook, we have this example of the benefits of this program, we can now go find more funders to continue to do these types of works and this type of efforts for our students. Um, improving student engagement. So I alluded to this before, the students are now seeing that what they're learning in the classroom is applicable to the real life workplace. And so it makes them more engaged and motivated within the classroom to learn so that they can continue to benefit from that in the workplace. Um, it provides students with enhanced career services. As we mentioned already, the career services gets better. That's much better for our students as well. Um, enhanced curriculum relevance. Again, as faculty have access to employers and industry experts, they're increasing and improving and modifying, updating and innovating their curriculum, which then leads to benefits for our students enhance reputation overall for the college, improve diversity and inclusion because we are showing that our underrepresented students are able to do just as much um, as students from any other college um, or institution. Um, so that can help also attract and retain a diverse student body and faculty and can create a more welcoming and supportive environment just as a whole. Um, regardless of your background, if you're a student and you're interested in working and you're interested in putting your best foot forward, we have opportunities for you to really show that, that maybe those opportunities would not have been um, present or available to you uh, in a different setting. And then better alignment with workforce needs. So the college as a whole is now getting a better understanding of the skills and competencies that our students need. After the first semester, we realize where, what areas our students needed professional development in. The first one I can think of is just email communication. So something super simple that we did not realize our students needed um, until we did this program and we got that employer feedback. Uh, so just some overall strategies to identify and engage um, as we start wrapping up here, because uh, I know we were short on time, so I want to make sure there's enough time for questions. Uh, building these relationships is going to require a lot of strategic planning and careful execution. Um, on the screen, you can see some of the strategies that a college can use to identify and involve local businesses, faculty, and career services and partnership programs. Um, so as Santa mentioned, some of the strategies, but um, this is the more strategic area to just engage those stakeholders. So first and foremost, in order to identify them, you need to conduct a needs assessment. That can be surveys, focus groups, start having those conversations and identifying the needs and priorities of local businesses, faculty, and career services. So you can start to see what players do you need at the table and how can they benefit? What can they contribute and how can they benefit? Open communication is essential for building these strong partnerships. Colleges um, can create opportunities for regular communication and collaboration with their partners, such as meetings, workshops, and networking events. So it's just having that open communication, even if it's not necessarily about that specific program at that moment. You want to make sure that you are sharing your goals and the purpose of this is just to ensure that everyone is vested um, in the interest of the partnership success and it could increase the likelihood of this being a sustainable program or project. Uh, building trust uh, is one of the hardest things to do and the easiest things to break right so you want to make sure um, that you're being intentional. Some of the key points and strategies in doing this is just being transparent, reliable, responsive um, to the needs of their partners. So that might mean assigning someone to be the communication person to make sure that communications are not left unheard or unresponded to. Um, and then this just establishes that foundation of trust and increased likelihood of long term success. With our partners for this program, specifically faculty and career services, we wanted to get them involved early um, because people help support um, what they helped build. Um, so we're, we have that long-term support throughout the two years of the program because we had everyone in on early, giving them the information that we had, letting them know any information that we didn't have yet, when we were expecting it, and of course being open to feedback. And lastly, as the college, as the administrator of this uh, potential program, you should be developing an action plan that outlines, outlines the specific steps and timelines for achieving all the shared goals. And again, this can ensure that everyone is on the same page and increasing the likelihood of success of this program.
So on the screen, there's a large summary of um, basically what we've been trying to share and portray, and hopefully that message has been clear. Mutually beneficial relationships between colleges and local businesses uh, can have several advantages. Uh, improved student learning, increased enrollment, increased retention rates, access to student talent, enhanced career readiness programs, um, and then to develop these relationships. It's, it, it's super essential to identify who the right partners are, establishing those communication channels, clarifying any roles and responsibilities, and developing shared goals and expectations. These relationships um, can also be improved through the education to employment pathways um, by getting those students involved as well, getting their feedback, getting them involved with the local businesses, providing faculty with that real world insights and creating pathways that benefit all stakeholders. And that is our presentation and we'd be happy to take any questions. Um, and I'm sure our contact information and the slides will be shared. Hi, okay, let me activate my camera again. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh my God, the, the, the chat have been on fire with a lot of comments and we have some questions already. Uh, let me put it again. Where is my, my other? I write them. I don't know if you can see all the comments uh, sharing some information. Thank you, by the way, to Dr. Toledo, who was uh, very active and also Others, we have a question from, I copy here, uh, from Dr. Mari, Maria Toledo, uh, que she, she asks, will the university expand into businesses or will nonprofits create these relationships and who will pay for these services? Okay, so I'll take a stab at mm -hmm. responding. Yes. And Goldman Sachs, the firm, funded this pilot project and it ends, it ended. We had our last cohort. And so as a university, we got a lot of information about what we need to do with our own career services and how we can incorporate and modify it so that our students can receive if not the same, similar experiences. So those were our takeaways. But funding, as I, as I mentioned to our president, we can take, we can, we have the, the model, we can propose it to other firms who may want to sponsor a student and pay for, you know, their internship experience in any organization. Um, let's see, would nonprofits create? No, the relationships would be created by the career services because they already mm -hmm. have relationship with employer partners. And so I don't know if the employer partners at other universities are with small businesses or the key is looking at larger businesses. And so if you're looking at mostly larger businesses, what we're saying is look at the local businesses and see how you can have a relationship uh, there. Great. Uh, Sandra, anything you want to ask, uh, uh, excuse me, to add, because we have another question. Uh, no, I think it's on to hit the nail on the head. Excellent. Well, we have also Dr. Alma Vega. Hi, Alma. Thank you for your question. She's from Ana Mendes, And she's asking, do you implement those initiatives with online programs? Um, so I can take a stab at this. Um, some aspects of our program was online in the sense that many students did have remote internships. I think the majority of the internships were remote, um, especially in the first uh, semester since most businesses had moved towards the remote setting. So if uh, travel or commute or anything like that was an issue, especially time with our students who have uh, multiple responsibilities in their personal and professional lives, they did have that aspect where they could participate in this program fully remote. Okay, great. The, I don't know if you can access the chat, but the other uh, comments are that excellent presentation. They want <laughs> us to share the presentation. So as soon as we finish, Sandra, if you can please send us by email in a PDF format as you, we usually do, and we will share it together with the recording. And Absolutely. Also, thank you so much. And also we have Dr. Mary, Mary Toledo, 
uh, take, talking about, I don't know if she was replying to a Santa uh, a, a, a answer that, okay, maybe a business research proposal, you have the model and the data. And Dr. Carlos Barbosa add like for motor credit has they had a pay experience program. And also Dr. Teledo, uh, during you were talking, she was uh, commenting about an experience and initiative here in Puerto Rico that was a long time ago, but when the political, you know, the government administration changed and the, the, they finished uh, that program, but she also talked about another funding that could be used to create yes. other initiatives. Uh, uh, let me see if it is something else. Um, ah, Dr. Toledo, she's brainstorming. I'm a grand writer. Oh, <laughs> yes, <see>. we're... <laughs> We're brainstorming as well. So as we've completed this two year um, program, like you all mentioned in the comments, we have the playbook now, we have the data to support what we wanna do. And so now it's really in our hands to develop something within our college. And so that's why we're happy to share the information with you all as well. So that hopefully Definitely. it also supports your efforts to, to create, even with a lack of that larger support within the college, I think we can build and also um, fundraise. Exactly. And also it's more than just what we talked about was a program, right? Mm -hmm. The program really supported stipends for the students. Some of our small businesses continued with our students and they paid themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you have, or, you know, already have a career services department, how can you implement this model? of mm -hmm. the reflection sessions of basically holding the hand. It's wraparound services that we're talking about that the student received that our current career services don't do, not in, in, in the exact same way. So it's also shifting the way we provide internship experiences within our universities. And so since we already have team members who are working with us to provide these services, we don't need money to support that. What we need money for is to support the students' experiences at small businesses, right? Because small businesses have more of a need to hire people. They're hiring more people than the larger corporations, right? So how do we then have, let, them let them trust us to say what we what we teach our students, they can help their small businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're getting, you know, in time experiences, right? So they don't want to, you know, chance it by spending money and it doesn't work. So we're going to build that relationship and trust with them. And then they might be able to also pay for them as well. Excellent. I see. Okay. Uh, Sandra, uh, I'm checking the chat. If, if uh, Dr. Toledo, said that if she identify a phone, she will share it. So please, Dr. Toledo, <laughs> you can share it with us and we will be happy to share it uh, through our member institutions as well, through heads, uh, through the heads uh, email campaigns. And also, uh, uh, and then uh, Sandra, thank you for sharing your, your email and a Santa email as well. Uh, thank you so much. Any other question uh, or comments? that you may want to add. Sorry, we uh, uh, enable the audios, but it's to avoid the line interruptions during the, the recording, but feel free to use uh, the chat that have been very active. Any <laughs> other questions? No? Okay, but I, I, I'm so happy that, although we have some technical issues at the beginning and we started late, our apologies again, we, we're lucky actually to be <laughs> online because the, the power here is go down at the Inter-American where our office is. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you again, Sandra. Thank you again, uh, Asanta, for uh, sharing your expertise. This initiative is amazing. We wish you the best. And please, uh, if you need any support from HEADS, please let us know as soon as possible. We will be happy to... Uh, collaborate with you in anything that you may estimate pertinent. And please remember the rest of you, uh, and uh, of, as well, Sandra and Asanta are invited to tomorrow as well. We have at 2 p.m. the Student Leadership Showcase uh, 
uh, Student Leadership Showcase Tour English Edition with Dr. Yesenia Minier from Western Connecticut State University, talking about a very pertinent and very uh, trendy topic that is the culture council uh, that you may heard on the news a lot. And also uh, remember that the, so, uh, apply, uh, you can apply for the Heads Academy if you are interested in continue getting more, uh, Bella, uh, getting more uh, expertise on the uh, topics of distant learning technologies. Remember, remember that these have a certificate of 24 hours, contact hours of continuing education. And also for the first time, we're gonna grab a digital badge to the alumni who uh, complete the academia. So any information, please let us know. And in June, we will have the, the two last a one webinar with Dr. Tito Melendez on June 15 and in June 30th, our special event with our colleagues from California State University, San Bernardino. So thank you so much again. Have a great afternoon. Remember that uh, you need to click on the link that Diane is putting on the chat to request your certificate. Please allow us one between one and two weeks to receive uh, the certificates. Uh, and also uh, you will receive by email, but also you can click on the link right here to submit the evaluation for this webinar so we can continue improving our webinars and also share, share during Bella in this uh, evaluation any other topic that you may want heads to look for an expert and talk about it. Please uh, share your feedback and recommendations for us so we can definitely uh, 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 do uh, this. Thank you so much again. Uh, final comment, Sandra and Asanta. Oh, just thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. We're so happy to share this information and we just hope that it was helpful. Oh. Yes, thank you. And feel free to reach out to us. We would love to help you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Say you. hi on my behalf, on my behalf to Dr. Sunil Gupta, that he's a uh, very <laughs> dear colleague, and to your president, Kenneth Adams, as well, that he were together with us at the February board meeting and also this, the best practices showcase, and he he was great. So please say hi to everyone we'll there. Okay, thank you so care. much. Let me thank stop you. the recording and then we can finish. Okay. Okay.